Hi everyone, I am Dr. Lakshmi Gayatri. In this video, I will be discussing about the boundaries and contents of the temporal and infratemporal fossa along with the muscles of mastication. The temporal surface or simply called as the temple is present on either side of the head, above and in front of the auricle. The boundaries of the temporal fossa are, it is bounded above and behind by the superior temporal line. So this is the superior temporal line above and behind. In front it is bounded by the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone. This is the temporal surface of zygomatic bone and greater wing of the sphenoid bone. This is bounded in front behind by the supramastoid crest of the temporal bone. So these are the boundaries of the temporal fossa. The temporal fossa is formed by four bones. They are the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the squamous part of the frontal bone. In front of the temporal fossa there lies a head-shaped sutural mark that is called as a terion. This terion is formed by these four bones. The terion is an important landmark for the surgeons because under this terion lies the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery and the stem of the lateral sulcus of the brain called as the sylvian point. Thus it forms an important landmark. The temporal fossa forms the floor of the temporal region which is present behind the frontal process of the zygomatic arch and below the superior temporal line. This temporal fossa communicates with the infratemporal fossa beneath the zygomatic arch which forms its only communication. The contents of the temporal region are temporalis muscle and its covering fascia called as temporal fascia, deep temporal nerves and vessels, auriculotemporal nerve and superficial temporal vessels. Coming to the infratemporal fossa or the infratemporal region, this fossa is present below the middle cranial fossa. So this is the middle cranial fossa, it is present below the middle cranial fossa. Also it is present below the zygomatic arch. So now let's see about the boundaries of the infratemporal region or the infratemporal fossa. The infratemporal fossa is bounded in front by the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. So this is the maxillary bone. The posterior surface of the body of the maxilla forms the anterior boundary of the infratemporal fossa. Posteriorly, it is bounded by this styloid process and here you will have the carotid sheath of the neck. So posteriorly, it is styloid process and carotid sheath. Medially, medially it is bounded by the lateral pterygoid plate. So this is a lateral pterygoid, this is a medial pterygoid. Medial boundary is a lateral pterygoid plate. Laterally, the lateral boundary is the ramus of the mandible. The lateral boundary of the infratemporal fossa is the ramus of the mandible. Above, it is bounded by the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. See, this is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Its undersurface is called as the infratemporal surface. So, this forms the above boundary of the infratemporal fossa. So, once again, I will repeat, anteriorly by the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla, Posteriorly by the styloid process and the carotid sheath, medially by the lateral pterygoid plate and laterally by the ramus of the mandible, above by the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. The infratemporal fossa below it is open. Now we will see the communications of the infratemporal fossa with the other structures of the around the skull. Before that, we will see some important 
structures this opening this opening is called as the inferior orbital fissure so it opens into the orbit so this is the inferior orbital fissure medially this opening is called as a pterygo maxillary fissure this is pterygo maxillary fissure and on the base of the skull so this is the opening this opening is called as a foramen ovale besides it you have one more opening called as foramen spinosum foramen ovale and foramen spinosum now we'll see the communications the infratemporal fossa in front through the inferior orbital fissure it communicates with the orbit in front with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure medially medially through the sterico maxillary fissure it communicates with one fossa which is present inside that is called as the pterygo palatine fossa through this pterygo maxillary fissure medially it communicates with the pterygo palatine fossa now above above laterally and above medially above laterally it communicates with the temporal fossa on the inner surface of the zygomatic arch above and medially through this foramen ovale and foramen spinosum it communicates with the middle cranial fossa so the communications are through the inferior orbital fissure with the orbit through the pterygo pterygo maxillary fissure to the pterygo palatine fossa through the zygomatic arch to the temporal fossa through the foramen ovale and foramen spinosum with the middle cranial fossa so these are the communications of the infratemporal fossa contents of the infratemporal fossa lateral and medial pterygoid muscles mandibular nerve with its branches cauda tympani nerve otic ganglion with its connections maxillary artery and pterygoid venous plexus these are the contents of the infratemporal fossa muscles of mastication there are four muscles involved in the masticatory process they are masseter temporalis lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid let's see about each muscles temporalis is a muscle of the temporal fossa it is a fan shaped muscle and originates from the floor of the temporal fossa below the inferior temporal line on its insertion it converges to form a tendon and passes deep to the zygomatic arch and finally gets inserted into the coronoid process involving its tip medial surface the anterior border also it gets inserted to the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible this muscle is supplied by the deep temporal branches of the mandibular nerve its action is to elevate and retract the mandible from both side it acts to cause side to side movement of the mandible masseter is a muscle which is placed between the face and the parotid region this consists of three layers of fibers superficial middle and deep the superficial layer takes origin from the anterior two third part of the lower border of the zygomatic arch the middle layer arises from the posterior one third part of the lower border of the zygomatic arch while the deep layer originates from the deep surface of the zygomatic arch overall the insertion of the masseter is into the outer surface of the ramus of the mandible but each layer has its own specific way of insertion that is the superficial layer inserts into the posterior part of the ramus of the mandible the middle layer into the middle part and the deep layer into the anterior part of the outer surface of the ramus of the mandible the middle and the deep layer together cross the superficial layer in an x shaped manner giving a cruciate appearance the nerve supply of this muscle is by the masseteric branch of the anterior division of the mandibular nerve the prime action of this muscle is the elevation of the mandible while the accessory actions are protraction by the superficial fibers and retraction by the deep fibers lateral pterygoid muscle is considered as a key muscle of the infratemporal region because this muscle divides the maxillary artery into three parts
Lateral pterygoid arises as two heads, upper and lower. The upper head originates from the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid, while the lower head arises from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Both the heads passes backwards and laterally and converges to form a tendon to get inserted into a depression in front of the neck of the mandible and partly it inserts into the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. This muscle is supplied by the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. The main action of this muscle is to cause depression of the mandible that is opening of mouth. Combined with medial pterygoid, it also causes protrusion of the mandible and side to side chewing movement. Medial pterygoid muscle is a quadrilateral muscle. Both the medial and lateral pterygoid muscle are part of the infratemporal region. This muscle has also two heads, a large deep head and small superficial head. The deep head of the medial pterygoid originates from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate while the superficial head arises from the maxillary tuberosity and the pyramidal process of the palatine bones of the pterygoid plates. Medial pterygoid also passes backwards and laterally and both the heads gets inserted into the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible and also into the angle of the mandible. This muscle is supplied by the direct branch from the trunk of the mandibular nerve. The prime action of this muscle is to cause elevation of the mandible or closing of the mouth which is antagonistic to lateral pterygoid. But along with lateral pterygoid, it also causes protrusion and side to side movement of mandible. To conclude, the key points of this discussion are the following. Thank you.